Welcome to the Weekly Roar, coming live from the Lion's Den, helping new managers become great leaders and awesome bosses. And now, here's your host, Greg Storch. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the Weekly Roar. <laughs> Thanks for coming back to the Lion's Den for this week's watch party. Today, I'm starting the new series called Inevitable Change, making pivots in your leadership. But before I kick things off, I'm Greg Storch. I'm the founder of Lion Enterprise, a leadership development and coaching business where I focus on helping organizations create winning cultures. I'm a certified professional coach and a certified leadership speaker and trainer. Last week, I wrapped up my Follow the Leader series by speaking about another concept in the foundations of leadership. I spoke with you about how to leave a lasting impression that lasts and the importance for leaders to consider how they want to be remembered. If you weren't able to catch those concepts in the foundations of leadership, all you have to do is head over to my website at www.lion-enterprise.com and access all of the videos by going to the Lion's Pride Library. The last video for that series is number 71. The Lion's Pride Library is another free resource that makes it easy for you to get more of the roar. So this new series that starts today is called Inevitable Change, Making Pivots in Leadership. And it's geared around keeping up with the time, staying flexible, and adapting to change as leaders if you want to continue being successful as a leader. So over the next several weeks, I'm going to talk about some of the pivots that you can make in your own leadership. And I hope it prompts you to think of other pivots you might need to make as well. So for today, I wanna start off by talking about the why. I mean, <laughs> where else do we start, right? Aren't we supposed to start with our why in mind? <laughs> so yeah, let's talk about why we need to be able to pivot as leaders. I also want to share some of the practices that you should put in place in order to pivot successfully in your own leadership. Now, I keep using the term pivot. Now, when I was a kid, I played basketball from the time I could be on the school team in elementary school, and I played all the way through my freshman year in high school. I loved playing basketball, to be honest. But if I am being honest, I wasn't really that good at it. <laughs> I just loved playing basketball. Now, I stopped playing in my uh, freshman year in high school because I had a knee injury. I was pretty devastated not to be able to continue playing basketball, but that actually led me into running. And there I did really well especially in cross country. So the point of my basketball story is to talk about a well-known move in the sport that's called the pivot. It's when a player who has possession of the basketball stops dribbling, but still wants to reposition themselves. They want to keep making a move. Well, in order to do that, they have to keep one foot stationary while they're allowed to move the other one around to make sure they're going in that direction or this direction. That's the pivot. A pivot's necessary when a player finds himself in need of repositioning. They need to change their position and switch to something new after they stop dribbling the ball. So pivoting's also used frequently in the world of startups. If you're an entrepreneur, you've probably heard the term pivot. You'll hear that a startup has made a pivot in the industry, which means their first business model wasn't working. So they pivot to plan B. 
maybe the item that they went to market is no longer their focus or the response to it wasn't as great as they planned, so they make a pivot to a new plan of attack. Now, pivoting can be used as a tool to discover additional growth, growth we may have overlooked. I've recently been hearing the term used also in life in general, people making life pivots. Usually that's around career changes, but it's also used to describe a change in direction, much like the pivot move in basketball that also allows the player to change their direction without incurring a foul. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is about dealing with change and keeping up with changes, especially when it comes to our leadership. I think you all might agree that everything changes, right? And these days, things are changing at such a rapid pace, faster than ever before. And as leaders dealing in a current world of rapidly changing technology, social media, and the rate at which change is occurring, the more flexible we are, the more adaptable we become, the more quickly we'll be able to move with the changes. If not, the times are gonna pass us by. As I was preparing for today's topic, one of the first things that came to mind when I started thinking about keeping up with change was an example, of course, of technology. We see this all the time with people as they get older, right? Like, how many older people do you know who are running around sporting the latest smartphone or tech gadget? And <laughs> not many. Some people are still out there using flip phones. <laughs> Some people out there don't even have a cell phone at all. It wasn't until my mom was in her 70s that I finally convinced her to get a cell phone. And I was only able to do that because I told her she'd be able to have the same number she had on her house phone for the past 40 years. <laughs> Change doesn't come easy for people. Change comes even harder for those who refuse to adapt, <laughs> to have the ability to change, to fit new circumstances. And this is a crucial skill for leaders to develop. Why? Because, well, times they are a change in. <laughs> in order to be able to do that, you have to learn to pivot. Good leaders adapt and pivot. They don't remain static because they know the world around them doesn't remain that way. And today, more than ever, we need to be able to change quickly because change is coming at us faster and faster. Adapt or be left behind. Now, when I talk about adapting to change, I'm not speaking about conforming to the new standard. There's a difference between conforming and adapting. Conforming to something keeps you average and it holds you back from standing out as being unique and we're all unique. Whereas adaptability is having the ability to sense change and adjust your position to take advantage of the new direction. Conforming stunts our growth because when we try to just conform, we're forced into the safe zone and don't even get me started on the safe zone. What's another name for the safe zone? That's right, our comfort zone. And I've never known anyone who has grown as a result of staying there. Our success as leaders really depends on our ability to get comfortable with uncertainty and to pivot continually. Why? Because with change comes uncertainty and uncertainty can cause many people to shrink and cower rather than act and move. So if you're ready to make some pivots in your leadership, there's a few things you need to start doing 
if you aren't doing these already. Now, this might require that you change your mindset. You'll have to assess how open you are to change. As I've already said, change is not an easy thing to do, especially when we first start to do these things to help us get better at making the necessary pivots in our leadership. But the one thing I know is that yesterday's methods will not address tomorrow's challenges. We have to be flexible as leaders and adapt to change. Adapting to change that occurs at a fast pace. You know, sometimes we get married to a process or an approach or an idea, especially when it's ours, right? But sometimes you have to abandon those ways to be able to move forward in a direction that is being dictated by the change. So here's the first thing. You want to foster a growth mindset. If you're not a growth-minded person, wait a minute, that was kind of dumb to say. You wouldn't be here right now if you weren't a growth-minded person. Let me say this another way. As a growth-minded person, you need to embrace the fact that we are all in a perpetual lifelong mode of learning. We all know that there is no finish line when it comes to learning and growth. And so that's one of the first things you should keep in mind on a daily basis is that we have to continually change and learn and grow as leaders. What we know today most likely won't serve us very long into our future. So don't get married to any one idea or practice. We also got to understand that what we knew today will have to be left behind and something new learned to take its place. If you aren't willing to do that, then you'll get left behind as well. Earlier this year, I made a decision to move from a Windows operating system to the Mac OS. For those of you who have made that switch, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's not easy. I actually tried to do it once before and I quit. I had held on to my Windows machine and as soon as I got frustrated with the Mac, I went right back to my old Windows machine. But this time, I got rid of my Windows machine. There was no fallback plan. I forced myself to adapt and learn to the new system. And you know what? I love it. And every day I use it, I get better and better at it. I don't even think about that old Windows machine anymore. And I certainly don't think about those Windows updates. <laughs> so I just said that yesterday's thinking won't address today's challenges. And that's the next thing you'll need to work on to get better at making necessary pivots. You got to understand that today is all we have. We have to realize that today stands on its own. It's got nothing to do with what happened yesterday. The reputation we built yesterday, you've got to reestablish that today. And you'll have to do it again tomorrow. Now, I'm not saying that we should discount yesterday, but I certainly am suggesting that we need to make an effort to focus on living in today. Look at it like this. Every morning you wake up, you're starting all over again. <laughs> if we intend to make the best of every day, then we have to do what's necessary then and there. I always say where our focus goes, our energy flows. If we're always focused on the past, we can't prepare properly for the future by focusing on today. Be grateful for yesterday and all that it brought you, but keep your focus on today in order to prepare for tomorrow. Now, I've talked about this next practice in my last series. I think it was just a few weeks ago when I talked about the importance of knowing 
when to lead. We're required to move quickly in today's world to be successful. We don't really have a choice, but when it comes to timing, we do have a choice. Just as important as knowing when to lead, knowing when to pivot is just as important for a leader. You know, when is the right time to bring a product to the market or to stop producing one that isn't selling like it used to? When is the right time to encourage our followers and when is the right time to challenge them? When do you bid on a new opportunity and when do you hold off for the right opportunity? See, timing is critical to the success of leaders. Don't worry about jumping on the bandwagon because by the time you see it, it's too late. If you continually work on improving your timing as a leader, knowing when it's time to lead, it will allow you to seize the opportunities and gain victories for your team. And that's what leadership is all about. Okay, the other thing I want to share with you is to think about this. There's always more to learn and the landscape is always changing. As you continue to grow, there will be more to learn. Why is that? Because as we grow and learn, we, we start to see even more than we saw before. The more you learn about something, the more you'll realize just how much you don't know about it. When I first started reading the book, The 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth by John C. Maxwell, I kept telling people that I had read it over and over and over again. And they're like, why? Are you that slow of a reader? I'm like, no. It's that every time I read it, I get something new from the book. Is it because the content of the book changed? Of course not. It's because I changed. I grew and I learned more. So every time I read that book, I was gaining more wisdom from it. I saw new things or I saw old things differently. Now, as growth-minded people, we're always learning. There is no finish line to improving for us. As long as we grow, there will be more to learn. <laughs> Having the ability to see more, do more, and be more is another thing that will help us as leaders to make those pivots in our leadership. Okay, here's something else to practice. Keep your focus on what lies ahead. In the Navy, one of the most important jobs is standing watch on the bridge of a ship. There's always a sailor assigned to that watch every hour the ship is at sea. And their main job is to watch the radar to see what lies ahead of the ship. Without focusing on what lies ahead, the ship is doomed for a collision at sea. Just as much as we need to focus on today and leave the past behind us, Another thing we should realize is the importance of thinking ahead. Thinking ahead allows us to stay ahead, and staying ahead is what tells us when it's time to make the pivot. But in order to think ahead, we have to have a clear picture of what it is we're trying to accomplish, what it is we want. Having a clear picture allows us to better see where we're headed. And when we focus on that, we attract it. Listen to this. Have you ever experienced this before? I call it the mind's eye, but it's happened to me when I was thinking about buying a new car. I would do tons of research to find the car I wanted. Then I would go test drive it, and ultimately I would purchase it. For months, I would be consumed with the image of that car. And as soon as I bought it, or even as soon as I knew what kind I wanted, I started to see that same make and model everywhere I went. 
look, there goes another, look, there goes another one. That's because what we focus on expands. Having the right awareness of where we're headed by thinking about tomorrow, focusing on what lies ahead, we begin to actually lead our lives and not just accept it. Here's another practice that you'll want to consider if you want to get better at making necessary pivots in your leadership. Understand that fear is the great paralyzer. It keeps us right where we are and it will not let us move forward. It is the catalyst of inaction. And the greater our inaction, the more opportunities we lose. Because opportunities are filled with uncertainty. And if we don't have the courage, if we're afraid to move forward despite that uncertainty, our fears will get worse and we're just going to remain frustrated because we're not going to go anywhere. Be brave. So many great things have started because of one single act of bravery. Having the courage to move past the fear. You know what fear stands for. I've said it a million times. False evidence appearing real. But we have to step out and we have to take that first step. Think about it. How many worthwhile things have you done in your lifetime that started out scaring the living daylights out of you? I've got plenty of those stories. Joining the Navy at 17, supporting the Marines in the desert in Iraq, getting remarried after a failed marriage moving to Italy and selling everything we owned. Think about it. You have those same kind of stories full of fear. And once you pushed past them, look at how you are today. Okay, the last thing I want to share with you, the last practice to help you get better at making these pivots in your leadership is to understand that best is the enemy of better. As leaders, we need to continually get better. Tomorrow's challenges are not going to be addressed with today's skills, abilities, and knowledge. Don't ever rest on your best because as soon as you do, you'll be put to the test. <laughs> <laughs> what we do today makes tomorrow the best it can be, or it can make tomorrow the worst it can be. Making the right choices, making the needed changes today impacts the choices and the changes you're going to face tomorrow. So if you want to maximize your effort today, Ask yourself this one simple question. Is this the best I can do? And even more importantly, am I getting better? When we challenge ourselves with these questions, they create this internal tension for improvement. We don't just go into tomorrow's challenges. We grow into them. When we continue to get better, when we continue to grow, we better position ourselves to execute these pivots that we need in our leadership. And we can do that by learning something new and trying something different. All right, you guys. So those were the seven things that can help you make the pivots you need in order to be a more successful leader. First, foster a growth mindset. Second, understand that Today is all we have. The third thing is knowing when to lead is still critical to leadership. The fourth thing is there's always more to learn and the landscape is always changing. The fifth thing I talked about was keep your focus on what lies ahead. The sixth thing was that 
you have to understand that fear is the great paralyzer and you have to push past it to do great things. And then the last thing I discussed was best is the enemy of better. All right, everybody, there is the introduction to my new series, Inevitable Change, Making Pivots in Your Leadership. Thanks so much for tuning in again this week for the weekly Roar! I appreciate your support. And remember, if you like this content, can you please share out the link to the weekly Roar video that I'm going to post on my timeline here in the lion's den after the watch party's over. I don't want you to share out the actual watch party link because once the watch party ends, I don't think it can be viewed anymore. It'll be a dead link. I'm going to be back here next week in the lion's den speaking about the first pivot we can make in our leadership. It's one of the biggest lessons I'd learned in the Navy, and that is that we don't accomplish anything by ourselves. So next week's pivot is about shifting our focus from me to we and why it's important to make this pivot to our success as a leader. So what do you think so far? Are you guys excited about this new series? Let me know what you think in the comments down below or over on the side, where, wherever the comments fall today. I'd love to hear back from you and please leave your comments. Give me a thumbs up, give me a heart, give me a love. Tell me where you're from in the comments. I'd love to see where you all are tuning in from as well. All right, everybody, until we meet again next week, remember, be powerful, but stay poised just like a lion. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching the Weekly Roar live event at lionenterprise.com. If you enjoyed this video, please tell others to join us each week here in the Lion's Den. Thanks again, and see you next week.